The fundamental question in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is whose land is it anyway? It's very easy when you have these clashes to get caught up in the minutia of it. Uh, Hamas fired a rocket and Israel attacked this Hamas leader. But that's fundamentally not what it's about. What it's about is two competing claims to the same land. And I want to sort of uh, probe this question in its primary or primal significance. Now, very interestingly, when we talk about America and the settling of America, uh, people often talk about the, the white man as the occupier. The white man came in and took the land from the Indians. Uh, the assumption here is that the Indians had some sort of a property right in the land. Now, obviously, the Indians didn't know about property rights. There's no, as far as I'm aware, American Indian John Locke to spell out a theory of property rights. So the simple notion here is that the Indians owned the land because they got here first that they have the title deeds, morally speaking, to the land because they were the original inhabitants. Well, by exactly the same logic, the Jews were the original inhabitants of Israel, of greater Israel. In fact, from the Old Testament, it was stated that God, in a sense, gave them that land. But whether or not you accept that, the religious significance of it, the simple fact of it is the Jews were there before the Palestinians. It was their land. Now, with regard to the American Indians, they were displaced. They were pushed further west and further south. This was the alleged dispossession of the American Indians. So the American Indians didn't vacate the land voluntarily. It was sort of taken from them. Well, by again, exactly the same logic, the Jews were pushed out of Israel. By who? by the Romans. The Romans persecuted the Jews, and when they destroyed the temple, I believe in 70 AD, the Jews were scattered. They were sent to the far-flung corners of the world. It was the beginning of the Jewish diaspora. Now, let's pivot and talk about the Palestinians. The word Palestinian comes from the Greek word Philistia, referring to the Philistines. Uh, the Philistines are actually described in the Bible, Samson against the Philistines. And uh, that was a region in the world, um, Palestine. There was never a state called Palestine, but the Palestinian people, who were basically the farmers and herders who moved in when the Jews were pushed away, these people were ruled by one conquering power after another. They were ruled originally, though that land was occupied by the Assyrians and the Babylonians, then the Persians, then the Greeks, then the Romans. Then a whole bunch of Muslim invaders, the Arabs, the Fatimid sultans, the Seljuk Turks, the Crusaders, uh, the Egyptians, the Mamluks. So this is one uh, ruling power over another taking control of that land. Now for centuries, basically from the 16th century to the early 20th century, the Ottoman Empire, which was the greatest of all empires, ruled over that region. But the Ottoman Empire became decapitated, it collapsed after World War I. And then the region called Palestine uh, was uh, controlled by the British. Uh, and the British in 1947 um, uh, worked with the newly formed United Nations, this is right after World War II, with a plan to partition Palestine or the region called Palestine into two regions, a, an independent Jewish state and an independent Arab state. Uh, now, they knew there was a big fight over Jerusalem, um, and so what they said is Jerusalem will belong to neither. It will be an international city. It will be under sort of special charter. Now, the Jewish leaders go and, okay, we accept the deal, but the Palestinians said no. They refused, and they began to mobilize an army to fight against this. And this was the root of the 1948 war, the war over the formation of Israel itself, in which you had a mobilization of a whole bunch of Muslim countries, Jordan, Iraq, Syria, Egypt, Lebanon, all together against the newly formed state of Israel. Unbelievably, Israel won that war. Uh, it's almost, you'd have to say, a secular miracle that little Israel was able to pistol whip all these Muslim countries working together. And now we have to fast forward from 1948 to 1967, because at the end of the 48 war, Jordan controlled the West Bank and Egypt controlled the Gaza Strip. 
But in the 67 war, you basically had a sort of second mobilization. The 67 war began with a war between Israel and Syria. But later, uh, Nasser brought Egypt into the war, and pretty soon it drew in Jordan, it drew in, it drew in Syria. And so this is the so-called Six-Day War. Israel won again. This is sort of a second miracle, uh, a second pistol whipping of the same kind of coalition. And this time, Israel got the Golan Heights, they got the West Bank, they got the Gaza Strip. Now, they made a deal with Egypt, they gave back the Golan Heights, but Israel to this day controls the West Bank and controls Gaza. And that's the region that is now occupied by Palestinians. That's the region now ruled. The West Bank is ruled by the Palestinian Authority, which traces itself to the PLO, uh, the old Palestine Liberation Organization run by Yasser Arafat. And the Gaza Strip is controlled and has been controlled now for some years by Hamas. So we have here a sort of an argument. The Jews say, we were here first. The Palestinians say, yeah, but when you left, and it was a long time ago, we sort of moved in and created a Palestinian state. To which the Jews reply, no, you didn't. There never was a Palestinian state. There were people grazing and, and shepherding and, um, and hunting on this land, but there never was, in fact, a state. The concept of a, an existing Palestinian state is a kind of fiction. This was a sort of a no man's land. And then we, the Jews, came back, starting in the late 19th century, but continuing in the 20th century. We bought land. We settled. We moved in. We have the same right to, uh, to occupy this land that you did. You just wandered over here, and so we wandered here too. And so what you have are these rival claims, and I suppose at the end of the day, it's impossible to definitively say who's right. But what I do want to say is that this notion that the Palestinians own the land, the Israelis are occupiers, the Israelis are colonialists, they've dispossessed the Palestinians, all of that is highly one-sided, tendentious, partisan ideological rhetoric. Uh, at the very best, you'd have to say that there are legitimate competing claims on the part of the Jews based on original occupation, perhaps on the basis of biblical sanction, perhaps also on the basis of, of the very simple fact that when the land was supposed to be partitioned, you fought us. You tried to fight for this land. We fought a war. You lost. That's that. That's about as good a claim as any historically. In fact, most of the boundaries on the entire planet have been established that way, through conquest, through a fight in which one side lost and then belly aches and goes, yeah, but we have a moral right. Well, yeah, but you tried to vindicate that right on the battlefield and you got pulverized. Now, I'm not saying that this is a justification for not giving the Palestinians citizenship or rights or any of that. All of that is a separate issue. But the idea that this is not Israeli land, the idea that the Palestinians really own it, and that Israel is a colonial power, that I think is established, certainly on the basis of history, but also on the basis of morality, to be a progressive leftist fiction.